Hello and welcome friends, welcome to another exciting episode where I will talk about an iconic model from Mont Blanc, the famous Le Grand model, the Meisterstück 146. And I have here a beautiful, beautiful example. In my opinion, it was produced in uh, a short period of time between 1980 and 1984. So, for approximately four years. I will uh, tell you about some characteristics that make me think that this particular model of 146 was made in the early 1980s. Okay, before I can uh, get into details, let's admire this beautiful, beautiful fountain pen for what it is. You are familiar with one of the longest fountain pens with approximately the same design. So this fountain pen, the 146 version, was made starting from the 1950s till present days. There was a little gap in the production. So um, between 1961 and 1972, Mont Blanc decided to stop the production of this particular model. But due to the fact that it was such a popular model, they had to reinstate them in their line starting with 1973. Well, guys, it's a cigar shape, it's a torpedo shape, call it uh, like uh, you want. But when you think of a fountain pen, this shape comes to your mind. It was popularized in movies and in fact it entered our system of representation. When you think of a classic fountain pen, you think of this shape. You think of a German piston filler equipped with an ink window with an open gold nib and a gorgeous, gorgeous look. In fact, this is one of my favorites. You might think it is boring, but I love the combination between the gold of the trims and the black of this precious resin that is so shiny. So not a simple plastic, but a precious resin that gives this shininess to our beautiful, beautiful writing instrument. What can I tell you about it? It has the classic Mont Blanc logo at the top of the cap. This is a Mont Blanc made in the 1980s, so the only engravings on the clip are this engraving, Germany, not West Germany, but simple Germany. We have some micro scratches here and there, but it is a fountain pen. Maybe from the year of my birth, I uh, saw the light of day in 1983. So, I like to think that this fountain pen is as old as I am. Okay, guys, let me tell you why I think that this fountain pen was produced in uh, that period of time. And I have three characteristics of it that separate it from other models of 146 made in different decades or different years, different periods. So, let me start with the most beautiful part of the fountain pen. And I will start with the nib. Well, this nib is a special nib. You can see it uh, has one color. So it is a monocolored nib. The color is a beautiful, beautiful color of yellow gold. And this particular nib, the monocolored yellow gold nib was equipped in the models produced between 1975 and 1984. But as you can probably notice, if I give a little zoom, you will see that this is an 18 carat 750 gold nib. Interesting fact, because if you search on the Fountain Pen Network, you will see that all the 146 produced in this period of time with a monocolor colored nib were only variants of 14 carats. And in fact, yes, guys, this is not a mistake. 
This is a fountain pen that was sold specially on the French market. And the French have a law that state or had a law, at least till the 2000, when they had to align to the laws of the European Union. So guys, they had a law that uh, stated that all the fountain pens sold with a gold nib must be equipped with a superior quality gold, namely the 18 karat gold nibs. The first characteristic is this monocolored gold nib. Again, characteristic of the models made between 1975 and 1984. Another interesting thing is that we have an ink window. It is a transparent ink window. It hasn't multi-faceted or stripes on it. So this type of gray solid ink window was specific for the decade, decade starting from 1980s till 1990s. So those are a few characteristics, but another characteristic is the engraving on the cap. So we have three rings guys and on the center ring we have interesting, we have Mont Blanc you can see, Meisterstuck and very important we have also the number, number 146. So this imprint on the cap was specific from 1973 till 1995. Another characteristic, an interesting characteristic is the length of this fountain pen when we post, when we close it. So from top to bottom it's exactly 142 millimeters long and this size of 142 millimeters was characteristics of the model produced between 1973 and 1995. So if we take these four periods of time we can see that the common years that have all those four characteristics that I've told you are this period from 1980 till 1984, including my year of birth, 1983. I like to call this fountain pen a fountain pen from 1983. Guys, it is a wonderful, wonderful piece. It is, of course, it is a piston filler a beautiful German with an ink window. What do you want more? Interesting, we have the old material of the feed. It is an ebonite feed, not a plastic feed. Quite, quite interesting, interesting model. Just for a comparison, guys, I have prepared other fountain pens made in Germany that have also this dimension interesting dimension so i have a pelican suveron m800 all black and the famous lamy 2000 i will leave them here maybe i will align them for you to to see the differences between them you can see the smallest one is the lamy 2000 again integrated piston filler with a small ink window the pelican Again, integrated piston with a general ink window, a green ink window, and of course, an open nib. You know that the Lamy 2000 has this uh, hooded, I will call it hooded nib. Some people call it a semi-hooded nib, but quite, quite an iconic model. And I will take advantage of this to leave the dimensions of our Mont Blanc Meisterstuck 146 from the early 1980s. Guys, I will leave uh, the other beautiful Germans aside and we will concentrate now on our fountain pen, particularly on its beautiful, beautiful nib and ebonite feed. Of course, you know that after I leave the dimensions, there will be the written sample portion of this video. For the written sample, I will use the classic Mont Blanc Royal Blue ink, a beautiful, beautiful ink. It's simple. We will open the ink bottle. 
it is a piston filler guys so you have to unscrew the turning knob okay like this you have to insert it make sure that the breathing hole of the nib is emerged in ink and then we will draw some little ink it is expensive this ink so remove the excess as well as you can now you can notice the ink window is no longer transparent this means that the reservoir is full of ink it is ready for writing remember guys to close the bottle of ink to avoid accidents this fountain pen can be posted guys but I don't want to leave in time some micro scratches there so I prefer to use it uncapped I will leave the cap here and before I will do the writing sample let me change the perspective of the camera so for you to see better the written sample let me bring it here now it is perfect so what do we have here guys we have a Mont Blanc Meister Stuck one forty six. This particular model, because of the characteristics I've just told you, I think it was made in this period of time. And I think in the description of the video, I will say it was made in 1983. It is a possibility. <laughs> okay, guys. So, definitely a fountain pen made for four. So, made in Germany. But an export model, an export model intended for the French market, France. And why? Because it is fitted with an 18 karat, uh, sorry, 750 gold nib. Okay, guys. Mm, yes, let me show you the flexiness of it I will try to do as many of this as I can so no flex let me see how juicy this nib is I think it's quite quite a nice juice yes you can see now I will do the line variation so here guys no pressure and here a little bit of pressure Let's say, hmm, no, I can't say I have a little line variation, so no line variation. Okay, guys, now let me see if I can reverse write with it. Reverse writing. Definitely not designed for reverse writing, it scratches a little bit, so no, in my opinion. But if I said that this is an F nib, this would be an extra fine nib. Okay, let me do a signature with it. Yes, quite, quite nice. You have to love a juicy, juicy nib when you do the signatures with it. It is wonderful, I tell you, wonderful. A beautiful, beautiful nib. Let me show you the main hero of the writing sample, the 18 karat gold nib. Helped by this beautiful, beautiful ebonite feed that holds all the ink and uh, really helps us a lot okay guys now let me tell you about the fox and i will try to write as big as i can so the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog Whoa, well, guys, a wonderful, wonderful writing instrument. By the way, I didn't tell you what I paid for it. So I paid approximately 
1000 lace, which means in uh, translation, let me see, around 200 euros. This is an approximation, guys, or let's say around 230 American dollars. I hope I get this right. In my currency, I paid 1000 lace and approximately with the exchange rate, it should be around 200 euros or 230 American dollars. And I think I did okay. So the only thing that I don't like on this fountain pen, and I didn't show you, is the fact that we have a plastic piston filler. So if we unscrew this, and I won't do it now, or maybe I will do it. Yes, I will do it at the end of the video. For you to see that this isn't a brass, uh, but it is a plastic piston. I'm not so sure. Yes, I have a 1146 with a brass filling mechanism, a newer one from the year 2000, and I will show you the difference. So guys, this was my review. I hope you liked it. And if you liked it, please subscribe to my channel to support my activity. I want to wish you to have a nice day wherever you are i want to thank you for your time and i've promised you that at the end of the video i will show you what i don't like about this fountain pen the only thing i don't like about this fountain pen but it is what it is and i like to own it in my collection because it is a nice example of the early 1980s version of the mont blanc 146 so i will simply put the ink bottle here i don't like to waste my ink i will drop every piece of ink from the reservoir you can see a generous amount of ink it is being held in the reservoir now I am done and I wanted to show you this part. So let me zoom on it guys. This is a plastic piston. In comparison with another fountain pen that I have here, this is an early version of the 146, I believe from the 2000, uh, year 2000. Uh, I think it is not filled with ink. Yes, not filled with ink. By the way, guys, this is the difference between a striped ink window and a simple ink window. Let me close it in order for you to see. Yes, I think you can see it. Yes. So this is a multifaceted a striped ink window. But I didn't want to show you that. I wanted you to see the brass piston filler. Oh, I think I had a little bit of ink left in this one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. So. And again on this one. I hope I don't. Okay. Let me show you. Now, let's give it a little zoom. So this is the plastic piston filler from the 1980s. And this is the modern brass filler from the 2000 this is the only thing that i don't particularly enjoy about this fountain pen now guys let me close it up and i will clean thoroughly the fountain pens thank you again for your time i want to wish you again a wonderful day Please take care of yourself in these pandemic times, guys. Just play with your fountain pens and stay safe. And we will see each other at the next episode. Till then, bye-bye and God bless you all.